Good evening and welcome to You Don't Want to Do That. Together, over the next 40 minutes, we're going to take an astounded look at that branch of the broadcasting industry that exists solely to tell you off. You must be out of your tiny minds. It's the kind of state-backed initiative that believes we're all fools and nincompoops. There's nothing like a good fire extinguisher to put out a fire. It's the broadcast equivalent of having your mittens on a string and riding a three-wheeled bike. You've got some TV that wants to have fun and games, and then you've got this sort that brings along a note to say it has a runny nose. <laughs> and what's more, it says you mustn't have fun either, in case you get a runny nose too. <laughs> it is runny nose TV. He's driving much too close. He thinks he's blazing Basil. Gosh, he's trying to pass on the inside now. And in the house of runny nose TV, there is an all-powerful nanny. She is the queen of caution, the party-pooping empress of interference. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the warped world of Lynn Folds Wood. Now time for our untiring consumer, champion Lynn Folds Wood, who, as usual, has found something unpleasant or unsafe. What's cooking this week? Another burning issue to put people off their tea. And if you're eating your tea, you might like to look away. The shocking fact is that some of the stuff you're going to buy is dangerous rubbish. You might unscrew bits that you shouldn't unscrew. Never leave them unattended. Always switch them off and check it over carefully. Don't buy one that's flattened or distorted. <laughs> they don't tell you because they could also kill you. So don't put your oven in front of the plug. Did you know that the bread in your toaster could go up in flames? Whatever you do, don't pour water on it. The thing is, there's a difference between recorded delivery and registered post. I don't really think this is a competition at all. For heaven's sake, don't sign anything unless you've read it. Then you present them the watchdog declaration and you ask them to sign it before you actually get them to do the work. Also, let me say, we don't give you a six-foot blow-up of it. We send you a piece of paper. And by God, she isn't joking! <laughs> Lynn, unless we can get the six-foot blow-up version, the deal's off. <laughs> do teasers with a six-foot warranty and then fobbers off with a normal-sized bit of paper. <laughs> what kind of scam are you trying to pull here, Woodsy? <laughs> so how does it happen? How does an industry that created Del Boy, Basil Fawlty, Ali G and Geoffrey Archer also bring us a Lynn Folds Wood? Well, my guess is that while the rest of us were growing up hooked on Grandstand and Top of the Pops and Cat Weasel, Lynn was studying the work that went into such essential warnings as this. Polish a floor and put a rug on it. You might as well set a man trap. <laughs> but I think he'd only just come from the hospital. A chilling reminder there of the killer carpet panic of 1974. <laughs> And what I want to know is, who woke up one morning and thought, I know what I'll do today. I'll make a film about the perils of loose rugs on shiny surfaces. <laughs> Elton John, probably. <laughs> you must remember that such slices of alarmist finger-wagging were as common on TV in the 60s and 70s as gardening and makeover programmes are today. Everything, we were warned, was a potential hazard. Nowhere was safe. And if you chose to actually venture outside, well, don't blame your TV for the consequences. last place in the world to leave a bottle is a beach. <laughs> Only a fool would ignore this. But there's one born every minute. Under the water there are traps. Old cars, bedsteads, weeds. The set of Steptoe and Son. It's the perfect place for an accident. Oh, look, Mr. 
If you want to have fun and stay alive, keep away from overhead power lines. <laughs> then you'll know you'll be playing safe. When you fly your kite or model plane, remember you're in charge of a flying machine. Pilots have to observe safety rules. So must you. Hang on. <laughs> what did he say again? When you fly your kite or model plane, remember you're in charge of a flying machine. A kite is a flying machine. So a uh, hula hoop, there must be some kind of intercity one, two, five. <laughs> Suddenly we can understand why a generation was driven into the arms of the internet. I mean, you heard the options. If you want to have fun and stay alive... Have fun and stay alive? <laughs> why, Mr Ambassador, you're spoiling us! <laughs> Mind you, in an earlier decade, you weren't even safe from the wagging finger of the government inside your own homes. This is what you must do to keep fit and healthy. Wash all over with soap. Wash your hair regularly. Dry your hair in the sun. Clean your teeth with your own brush and toothpaste and your own clean glass. Powder your feet between the toes. <laughs> Wear shoes in public places to avoid infection. Wear clean clothes, always. After using food, cover it up. Have picnics in the open. Remove dust whenever you can. <laughs> Flies crawl through holes in gauze, so repair them. Kill all insects. Kill rats, for they carry germs. Kill everything! <laughs> And if Grandad blows off at the dinner table, you'd better kill him too. <laughs> but wash your hands afterwards. <laughs> Any confused teenagers watching that might wonder why there were quite so many rules and guidelines for young people then. Well, the answer is there was nothing else for them to do. MTV, Pokemon, David Beckham, they hadn't been invented. And sex was only allowed in certain parts of Paris if you had the right paperwork <laughs> and you washed your hands afterwards. <laughs> Government initiative for teens were thin on the ground. Here's a typical brainwave of the times. Public enemy number one, hunted all over the world. Message on. Call on LDV, litter defence volunteers. Hotline, clean, tidy. Humor, they strike against public enemy number one wherever he operates. <laughs> litter costs you money. Litter defense volunteers stop litter. Save the cost of picking it up. With more public help, they'd do even better. <laughs> Keep litter to yourself. Put it here. Yes, kids, before Leonardo DiCaprio, there was always Roy Hudd. <laughs> that was a campaign urging teens of the 60s to spend the day collecting trash with good humour. Today, we dish it out to muggers as punishment and we call it community service. <laughs> However, good though the unpaid bin man offer was, Britain couldn't keep sex off its shores forever. In 1967, it was brought across from France and the government issued this following visual handbook to any willing takers. Lucky girl. She's one of the popular ones. Pretty too, and quite a figure. Lucky girl. The boys are beginning to think about their appearance a bit more. And perhaps they show off their manliness a bit to impress the girl. The girls begin to experiment with ways and means of attracting the attention of the boys and here and there giving nature a bit of a hand. 
And why has this remarkable change happened? Well, say it how you like, it all boils down to nature making sure that the human race is going to go on. <laughs> you see, all those changes that have happened to their bodies add up to one great step forward. They're now capable of reproducing themselves. <laughs> but becoming fathers and mothers of children following the process called sexual intercourse. <laughs> It didn't take civilized man long to discover that the only workable way to use this remarkable power was for a man and a woman to pair off and to raise their children as a family. And whatever else we say here, we must recognize that our society accepts the married state as right and regards sexual intercourse outside marriage as irresponsible and possibly disastrous. Not entirely in the spirit of Section 28, that, but... Uh... <laughs> So, only sex outside marriage can be disastrous. Well, kids, just wait till you get hitched and watch the old love life go into post-traumatic shock. <laughs> and this is the ultimate act of union between man and wife. Sexual intercourse. <laughs> I understand. On a good night, he can last twice as long as that. <laughs> It's odd, though, that a nation that lived in denial of shameful S-E-X for so long actually saw half of its population as of little use for anything but. Ah, now here's my favourite mini-driver, my charming Mrs. Smythe. Now, don't get flustered, dear, with a little problem like this. It'll all work out. She's still not quite sure of all the knobs and pedals, you see. <laughs> It often takes women longer to get the hang of a machine. Her really dangerous time isn't jogging about here. It'll be when she thinks she can drive without thinking. There's everything here. From foreign gents desperately trying to find the phrase book equivalent before it's too late. To your proverbial damsel in distress. A home is for all. One must move quickly to the rescue. You know, in this job, you get more than your fair share of glad eyes. <laughs> Something about the uniform, I guess. We learnt how the body moves, and we learnt how to use our own bodies properly. This was an exercise to teach us how to lift heavy people without strain. <laughs> Back and forward. Now, we should be on the ground for one hour at Rotary Fuel before continuing to Benghazi, which will take a further three hours. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. How do you like your coffee? One we want. Now on with the spare. Well, well, well. And now see what happens. Oh, my God, darling. And again. <laughs> There's a lovely girl with a lovely head of hair. Hmm. And quite a figure, too. Thinking of a miner's helmet. Yes. Ah, good. This is Smythe again. A bit fed up about the lights being red at the moment. And there's that same friend of hers. Mrs. Smythe certainly can handle that little car now. But just one small point, Mrs. Smythe. Your mirror is still in the friend's nose powdering position, you know. Look at the little dears, chatting away. Never a traffic thought in the world. <laughs> Empty-headed little pets, aren't they? <laughs> no wonder it was left to men to tackle things like this. <laughs> All good, healthy stuff. Essential, too. For a man without such a wholesome hobby as chairlifting can so easily go off the rails. Not everyone in a supermarket is there to shop. At least, not from the shelves. Make sure your purse is out of sight. Don't make it easy for the thief. Watch out for your purse. Before someone else does.
Yes, in those days, he really could spot a run-in by the size of his tash <laughs> and the distracting swing of his full onion sack. <laughs> but the guys had plenty of other legitimate skills to get to grips with, too. The craft of being a chap and mastering traditional manly things does not just automatically arrive on that day you get handed your winkle. It's easy when you know how. But how many men know the correct way to lift heavy loads? This man, for instance. Mr. <laughs> Nelda, who forgets to replace his eye shield. Oh! Right? Right. Let's see what can happen with untidy, loose clothing. There. You might as well have come in your underpants. <laughs> the salute is the most obvious form of smartness noticed by members and other motorists. The correct right-hand salute right up to the peak of the hat, complete with a good smile. The correct hand for the salute is the right hand, and it should be a clean, clear salute with a cheerful smile. And now look at this. This Heil has been out of date since 1934. How bad it looks to the passing member. And now this from the opposite camp. Shocking! It not only lets down the AA, but where is the man's pride in himself? Look at this for sheer slovenliness. How bad it looks. The smart salute with a smile is the outward visible sign of your desire to give courteous and efficient service. And you yourself are alert and well turned out. You're an active and continuous reminder to members and to non-members of the service you are there to provide. Those were the days when the AA had a touch of the SS. <laughs> And didn't you just love the guy whose salute was of the two-fingered variety? <laughs> Hello, watch again. Oh, you're in the RAC, are you, you bastard? <laughs> These days, such organisations like to say that they are the fourth emergency service, the fifth being the pizza delivery, the sixth being the video repairman, and the seventh being those layabouts down at the minicab office. <laughs> I know the eighth is those people on the boring old lifeboats, but what about the first? I suspect it isn't the fire brigade or the paramedics. I suspect that it's the police, because they have to be ready to deal with absolutely everything. George, you think? Loose in the bathroom? Well, who the hell is George? That's George? Yes, well, it's all in the line of duty, as they say. We're here to help. And catching canaries is all part of the job. <laughs> and those of you who are way ahead of me could say something about a bird in the hand being worth two in the bathroom or something. <laughs> She's grateful, of course. Very grateful. And invites me to stay for tea and a bit of cake. So, uh, <laughs> what would you do? Right. Mirror, nothing behind me. Course into the near side of the road as near as I can. Watching this man get into his car. Into first gear, a quick look to the right, and I can see the road to the right is clear. Clear to the left, clear to the right again. And there's cars parked either side of the road here, coming to another T-junction, into second gear. I intend to turn left, watching this man on the left, mirror, nothing behind me. Keeping well into the near side because of this dairy vehicle, into first gear. Plenty of pedestrians abound here, I see. Quite a busy road. Brown had an idea. This is it. A thief-catching device activated by a hairspring trigger which shoots out an entangling anti-getaway net. In action, it works like this. The bandit makes his getaway fast. He's stolen some five-penny stamps. But, unknown to him, Mr. Brown has heard the alarm bell. He's ready for action. It's not as easy as it might seem to get out of a hundred square feet of nylon netting. A simple, cheap and effective little gadget. An English version of Dragnet. Looking to the right now, and it's clear to the right. Clear to the left, clear to the right again. Cars parked either side of the road, broken white line in the centre of the road, into second gear, distant crossing, clear to the right, I can't see to the left, yes, there's a man on the left, mirror, nothing behind me. Here's the sequence of a payroll snatch. The guards' hats are reinforced by glass fibre, they're cosh-proof. And the bag incorporates a mechanism to sound the alarm and a handle which clamps onto the thief's hand. Telescopic arms spring out 
and a getaway becomes impossible. <laughs> Model, never trust a bag you don't know. Yes, long crossing. Slow down the signals allowing him to know I'm going to stop. No need for the handbrake. Into first gear. Well ahead of me, I see stationary vehicles just moving off. Mirror being followed now by a light van. Vehicles are stationary at the moment now and just moving off very slowly. Checking the speed. A new use for a policeman's helmet and lamp. That's a safety light for the constable on traffic duty. Worked from a battery attached to the policeman's belt, the flashing blue lamp is designed so that passing traffic can see him more clearly. Now, passing traffic has no difficulty in seeing the constable on point duty. I'm in first gear. No need for handbrake here. Vehicles ahead of me are moving on. Mirror, there's a vehicle behind me. I've got to move out. Moving out signal now. There's a van behind. Of course, now to overtake this vehicle. Watching a woman, I think it is, getting into a van. Thank the woman there for waiting for me. In the second gear. Road ahead of me bears around to the left. A road junction on the right. An obelisk in the center of the road. Keeping away from these stationary vehicles on the near side. Woman is waiting on the near side. Well ahead of me, I see a roundabout sign. Pedestrian crossing. Clear left, center, and offside. Mirror. In police parlance, we call this place the Nick. And police women, like Margie here, aren't just pretty faces. <laughs> Give them any trouble, and like as not, you'll find yourself in a half Nelson. We've come to think of it, might not be a bad idea. <laughs> Turn left of this roundabout. A vehicle behind me now. Turn left signal to him. Supplemented by the indicator. Keeping as far into the near side as I can. There's a vehicle parked on the near side, coming to a suburban road. A slight warning to the woman on the left. Another canine guard who keeps a dog watch is this Alsatian. But he isn't real either. He's stuffed. And his job is to scare off anyone who, in spite of the look of the car, wants to pinch it. Coming into now quite a quiet road, a road junction on the right. Mirror not being followed. Into top gear. Getting well away now. Sounds dark, perhaps, but it keeps your mind on the job. So it's all everything except the armed robbery. <laughs> Our soporific friend there was advising new recruits on a technique called road observation. But I do think that after he recorded it, they were able to close the book on who swiped the big bottle of amphetamines from the evidence room. <laughs> and while we're on the tricky subject of drugs, do you recall those obtuse and sombre ads in the 80s that thought the best way to scare kids off hard drugs was by saying they did this <laughs> to your brain? Because of that peculiar campaign, apparently 90% of today's 30-somethings still believe heroin makes your organs taste delicious. <laughs> Speaking of which... Keep slim and you'll feel really well and enjoy life more. And remember, there's nothing better than plenty of dairy foods like butter, cream, cheese and milk. This is Bill doing his pools. This is Molly, his wife, enjoying the television. This? Well, this is the villain of the piece. A trifle that Molly cooked yesterday and left in a warm place all night. Bill ate some of that trifle. He ate a lot of it. <laughs> but poor Bill feels rotten. You don't really believe in microbes, do you? Nor does Anne, newly married and still starry-eyed about it all. Though this food looks good enough and everything is quite clean. Or is it? So infuse the tea, reheat the stew, cut half a dozen slices of bread, throw in a couple of buns, and Bob's your uncle. But Bob is not your uncle, or any other kind of relative. That pot of stew could be dangerous. As dangerous as a stick of dynamite in the hands of a child. That's not strictly true, is it? In fact, it's rubbish. Look, I'll prove it. This is a child eating stew, OK? And this is a child with a stick of dynamite. <laughs> I think you've noticed an appreciable difference. <laughs> Take it from me, Breton. By and large, stews, trifles and even certain kinds of potato will not explode when you handle them. That's not to say everything in life is equally safe and benign. I'm very well aware, perhaps more than most, that motor cars can present problems if you're really, really stupid, as can the explaining of their dangers. You're 80 feet up. 
that's equivalent to crashing at the maximum legal speed of 70 miles an hour. How would you like us to drop you now? No, no, let me down. Do you still think it's safe to drive without a seatbelt? No. Will you promise to wear a seatbelt always, even on short trips and around town? Yes, yes, I promise. Please let me down. John Park has got a new car. Can he drive it? Can he drive it? He's a marvellous driver. I saw him turn right into Park Street the other day. He looked into his mirror, gave a clear signal, pulled just over to the crown of the road, well before he got to the turning, and then turned when it was clear. He's a better driver than you are. And what's wrong with my driving? Remember what happened when you turned right the other day. Well, I didn't have an accident. No, but lots of people do. We just want you to be as safe as Don Barker. Not so long ago, people with traffic problems usually found a quick answer. But today's drivers need to keep a cooler head. Do you leave enough space when following other vehicles? And if another car fills the gap, do you drop back? If you don't, this sort of thing can happen. Remember, keep your distance. That car driver will be more careful next time. For the motorcyclist, there isn't going to be a next time. So motorists, be particularly careful at junctions. Think once, think twice, think by. You can put almost any frail object in a box. Provided it's held firm, you can shake it about no end. But if it's loose in a box, that's another matter. A car is a box, a box on wheels, but a box just the same. It's the Pelican Crossing! <laughs> When the red man's on, pedestrians wait Cause drivers may go is what the green light states Just press the button and you soon learn The green man's on and it's your turn And when the green man's flashing and the amber too This is what you gotta do Pedestrians don't start to cross Your life's more important than the time that's lost Drivers, just you listen here. Only go ahead when the crossing's clear. When you walk and when you drive, obey the pelican and stay alive. Learn how to use the pelican crossing. <laughs> so, that last effort, doesn't it rather sum things up? About 30 actors, 20 cars, props, wardrobe, makeup, producers, directors, God knows how many thousands of pounds in budget, cameras on cranes, a specially commissioned and unbelievably annoying song, and all to teach fully grown adults how to get from one side of the road to the other. <laughs> Look! You can even see the luxury coaches that got everyone out to the location. <laughs> all it lacked was a big star guest. However... It transpires they were saving that up for a vehicle starring Doctor Who, John Pertwee, in perhaps the clumsiest and most ill-conceived message movie of all time. Here's how to remember the Green Cross Cone. First, find a safe place to cross, then stop. Stand on the pavement near the curb. Look all round for traffic and listen. If traffic is coming, let it pass. When there is no traffic near, walk straight across the road. Keep looking and listening for traffic while you cross. Hey! Well, now we'll all remember the green cross code. <laughs> and use it. Splink! Splink? <laughs> My particular favourite is the I, which stood for... If all looks clear and theirs. <laughs> Why splink? Why not... Wondonka, which stands for Watch Out Dopey Motorcars Arriving, or Fatodti, Fancy a Taste of Tarmac, do you? <laughs> or best of all, Kiatmoir, which of course is Kill Everyone at the Ministry of Information. <laughs> but then, maybe I'm being too hard on our subject. I'll happily admit that not all of the tut-tutting missives handed down from our betters are useless. Some, it has to be said, might even be looked at with something approaching affection. Oh, I'm terribly sorry I'm late. And, oh, I had to wait hours for the boss. I am sorry. Oh, that's all right, Glenda. Oh, gosh. I'm so glad you could come along and star in my latest film. Is this a film what you wrote? Well, not exactly. Oh, what's it about? Blood. Blood? Oh, no! No, I can't! 
The needle, is that what you're afraid of? Please, as a friend, don't ask me to do this. No, the needle. No, I'm not. No, don't make me do this. Please, don't make me do this. You're overacting. How dare you? I am not overacting. Those of you who can't swim yet, then if you just wait over in the shallow for me. Kids and water, they love it. Rivers, canals, even the lily pond in the garden. You can't keep them away from it. Water has a fascination for children. And I should know, when I was three years old, I fell in the river at our place, couldn't swim, somehow managed to scrabble my way to the bank, frightened the wits out of my mum and dad. And you can bet they had me taught to swim very soon after that. So have your children taught to swim. They're never too young to start, and once they get that confidence in the water, they love it. Ask at your local swimming pool, all right? Or if you can swim yourself, why not teach them yourself? It's fun. See you. Crossing. The light's green. Carry on, Jim. Don't panic, don't panic! Captain Man, the light's flashing. What do we do? We, uh, we, uh, we, we, we... Well, one continues to cross. If one's already on the crossing, there's plenty of time. Precisely. Carry on, Jim. <coughs> one shouldn't start. One shouldn't start to cross. That's wrecking, Wilson. That's wrecking. Learn your blinking pelican signals. One fine day, Tufty is playing on the grass with Bobby Brown Rabbit. But Harry Hare and Willie Weasel are playing out by the road near the cars and buses. Oh, my word, says Policeman Badger. You are both silly boys to play in the road. <laughs> Just look at them. <laughs> They must be crackers. A double-decker bus could be right on top of them and they'd never even see it. Hey, what do you think you're playing at? Come here. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Come back here. Hey, you two, come here. <laughs> hey, you must be out of your tiny minds. When you cross the road, always use the green cross code. Now here, there's no park cars to block your view. Nothing coming, sure? Now look. When you get to the curb, stop, okay? You better learn to stop at the curb. And I mean stop, right? <laughs> Off you go. Straight across, mind. And keep your eyes open. Keep your wits about you and keep looking and listening. Okay, nothing coming. Now go. Great. See you, girls. Take it from me. Be smart. Be safe. <laughs> Take it from me. Be smart. Be safe. Take it from me. Be smart. Be safe. Take it from me. Be smart. Be safe. Ah, the heroes of the 1970s. Perhaps I should point out for any youngsters watching that while you may be aware of who Kevin Keegan is, you probably won't know that Joe Bugner was our king at the time. <laughs> and Les Gray and Alvin Stardust were in fact two famous British astronauts. <laughs> they discovered the planet Splink. <laughs> the world of insane and uncoordinated clothing. And not only that, but they captured its evil ruler and brought him back to Earth and put him to work. You two need a lesson in crossing the road. A little friend is going to show you how. First, find a safe place to cross. Here. A safe place away from parked cars, where you can see the road is clear and drivers can see you. Stop near the curb, but not too close. Look all around and listen for traffic. If traffic is coming, let it pass. When there is no traffic near, walk straight across, looking and listening all the time. We won't be there when you cross the road, so always use the green cross code. <laughs> Dave Prowse, the Green Cross code man, who later went on to play Darth Vader, though tragically without the glorious Tintagel twang. <laughs> so, come back public information film, all is forgiven? Mm, no, afraid not. Looking back in nostalgic kitsch is one thing, but actually living in a world where cream cakes kill people and every carpet is a man trap is just too awful to contemplate. Besides, we've enough to worry about with the mighty Lynn Folds Wood out there, ready to reveal at any moment that you shouldn't put your dog on the space shuttle launch pad. <laughs> so 
Trust me, that woman will not be satisfied until she sees the return of this sort of thing. Hey, you can't take all those notes with you. You can take your holiday or business allowance in traveller's checks, but not more than five pounds in sterling notes. And that five pounds is not for spending abroad, but to meet expenses in this country when you return. Do you know that? You understand anything? <laughs> Good. Well, remember, you can take out five pounds in notes, but not more than five pounds. The maximum is five pounds in notes. Five. Five. Five pounds in notes. Get it? Ah! Five pounds in notes. You mean five pounds in notes? <laughs> so, watch out, Breton, and don't say, I didn't warn you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm just going to, you know, turn the little ladies on with some... Recreational chair lifting, okay? <laughs> be good, behave, be saving. Good night. Just come home. Looking forward to that nice, big, fat, juicy. Isn't it ready yet? Smells good, though. Ah. Here it comes. A big, fat, juicy, mmm, nothing like it. Go to work on an egg and come back to a chicken. That's the way to a man's heart. Can't wait to get at it. <laughs> Juicy. Oh, be dangerous. <laughs> if there's a risk to your hands, wear a pair of safety gloves. Then your enjoyment's complete. Isn't that so? Safety gloves cut down the risk to the hands, no matter what you're doing. 